Hello everyone, welcome to this research methods tutorial about hypotheses. Quick note on how to use the tutorial. You must take notes from the tutorial. The slides with the pause button are the minimum that you need to have in your notes. So watch and listen to the tutorial first and then pause the video at the end of the slide to take notes. You should also try to add into your notes some examples to illustrate what we're talking about or some questions that you have about the material if there's anything you don't understand. And then we can discuss these in class. You could, if you wanted to, read around the subject by following the web links or by reading your textbook. So let's look at what we mean by the word hypothesis. First thing you need to know, there are two kinds of hypothesis that you could be asked about in your exam. One is called a null hypothesis and the other is called the alternative hypothesis, which includes directional and non-directional types. We'll talk about these a bit more as we go through. When writing hypotheses, it's really important that you operationalise both of the variables. If you remember from the variables tutorial, to operationalise just means to clearly state how you're going to manipulate your independent variable and measure your dependent variable. This is a really bad example of a hypothesis that's not been operationalised. Older people will be better drivers than younger people. I've not said here what I mean by older or younger people, and we don't know what we mean by a better driver, what makes somebody a better driver. Here's a much better example of this same hypothesis, which has been fully operationalised. People between the ages of 35 and 50 will make significantly fewer driving test errors than people between the ages of 19 and 34. The word significant in the hypothesis just means that the differences between those two groups has to be statistically significant. Okay, a null hypothesis is a statement of no difference. Look at the words null and no, note that they're very similar. Researchers need to consider that there might actually be no difference at all between the conditions of the independent variable, and the null hypothesis is there to cover this eventuality. By conducting their study, the researcher is trying to reject a null hypothesis, or disprove it, by showing that actually there is a difference. We could write a null hypothesis like this. There will be no significant difference between participants given words or pictures in the number of items remembered from a list of 10. Okay, so notice again the word significant is included in the hypothesis and we've also included reference to the independent variable here in red and the dependent variable in green. Okay, so now let's look at a directional hypothesis. So remember this is one type of alternative hypothesis because it's the alternative to the null hypothesis. A directional or one-tailed hypothesis states the direction of the predicted difference. It's best to illustrate with an example. So participants given pictures will remember significantly more items from a list of 10 than participants given a list of 10 words. So the word more here tells us which direction we expect the change will be, which group or which condition of the independent variable will perform better or worse. Words like faster or slower, better, worse, are all indicators of a directional hypothesis. To illustrate, we can see using an example of a cat why it might be called a one-tailed hypothesis. So if we look at the picture of the cat, we can see it's got one tail and we know which end is the front, which end is the back. When it moves, we can tell which way the, the cat is going to walk. So to help you remember a one-tailed hypothesis, think about the cat and we know which direction it's going to go in. A non-directional hypothesis is also called a two-tailed hypothesis. And this just states that there will be a difference between the groups of participants, but it doesn't predict which way that difference will lie. So, for example, there will be a significant difference in the number of items remembered from a list of 10 between participants given words and participants given pictures. Now, we might not know if participants will remember words or pictures better, so we don't know which direction that change is going to go. This is where it gets a little bit weird, because again, we can illustrate this with a cat example. Here is our mutant cat with two tails. 
Because it's got two tails, we don't know which way it's going to go if it were capable of walking. So it could go in either direction. We can't specify which way it's going to go. So again, to help you remember, if you want to, imagine the two-tailed cat. We don't know which way, so it's non-directional. And lastly, we just need to talk about correlational hypotheses, because these are very different from the kind of hypotheses we've looked at previously, which we might use in an experiment. So they can also be applied to correlations. They would still have null directional and non-directional hypotheses. But because we're looking for relationships between variables rather than differences between groups, we'd write these in a different way. So for example, if we're writing a, a null hypothesis for a correlation, there will be no significant correlation between height and shoe size. Okay, same thing for a directional hypothesis. There will be a significant positive correlation, or we could say a significant negative correlation. Okay, so here we've specified which direction the hypothesis is going by saying positive or negative. And in the same way, a non-directional hypothesis would be something like there will be a significant correlation, but we don't know if that's going to be a positive or a negative correlation, so we can't specify. The cat example will still apply to these, but it's just the way that we phrase the hypothesis when we're writing them, because we're not looking for differences, we're looking for relationships. And that's all for this tutorial, so thanks very much, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.